Well, today's episode is still going to feature more on Gato Moves Choco Pro event with the continuation of Oak Tagli. We're in day five, I believe. And also, we got reviews from previous events by two more Yoshi promotions, which is Tokyo Yoshi Pro and, of course, Ice Rip. So, let's get started with another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted WrestleZone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I'm your host, Jay Rod here. So, let's begin with Got to Move Pro Wrestling with their Choco Pro event, continuation with Oak Tag League. We're in day five, I believe, number 132, no, 31. However, I want to put out a note somewhere. Um, Emi Sakura, along with uh, Mei Shigura, Balianaki, and Chi Koshikawa were not present in this event. Reason is they had to travel to another location in Iwate uh, Prefer, uh, another region, which they're being participating with Michinoku Pro, Pro Wrestling. Um, it's still unclear when they will be returning, but however, in the next episode, it will feature Choco Pro in Michinoku Pro Wrestling, the special event that they are going to do. But however, they decided to continue with the remaining whatever they have with their shows. However, uh, Lulu Pencil, and I forgot who else continued. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kirahara continued on without them to finish off two of the matches for the A Block and B Block. So let's go with that at this moment. Um, so we A Block, we have Dragon Ninja, consistent of Surui and Chon. Uh, Shiru, who they automatically already out since they lost their first two matches. Taking on Watsoi Anaki, consistent of Ayumi, Hayami, and Ryo Nizunami. So this is their second match so far. Match was pretty fun. There was I can see Ayumi, she's more energized than any other person in this match, which was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. It's so entertaining. But however, in this particular match, it had to come to an end once again for Dragon Ninja. They were unsuccessful, allowing for Ayumi to pick up the victory for her team. So basically, they get their first two points. They currently have, well, I'll do the point system a little later, but we'll continue more. Now we got Block uh, Block B. We got Melt Brain Dancing, which consisted of Chango and Psycho taking on M. Sayaka. Consistent of Sayaka and Minoru Fujita. This was also one of those matches where you can tell that Melt Brain Dancing are could most likely be the one team that could be facing the winning the entire league or possibly dethroning the best bros. It all depends how this has gone on because I know that these two guys have faced the best bros in the past, but the match was great. You wouldn't expect them. To be the one team that could be a, a threat to obtain the Asian Dream Tag Team title. So they won their match while they pin Sayaka. Now let's see what how the point system going. Let's go with the A block. Best bros, they currently have um, one win and two draws, no losses. So that is a total points of four. Uh, Tropy Kawild, because they have... One win and one draw. So that's a total points of three. Dragon Ninja, no wins, no draws, three losses. They got zero. Wasoi Anaki only have one win, one draw with the total points of three. So basically, Best Bros are currently in the lead in the A block. But however, let's see how things are going with the B block. Melt, uh, Melt Brain Dancing, two wins. One loss, one draw, and no losses. So they got the total of five points. 
uh, White Kenochi, they only have one draw and two losses. They only got one point. But however, these guys already lost their first two matches. So they're already out. Egg Tarts, they only have one win and one loss with a total points of two. Misayaka have one win and one loss, so that total points of two. So basically, uh, it's too early to tell, but I can see that maybe as a possibility we may see in the finals Best Bros taking on Melt Brain Dancing. So it, anything could happen. So we just got to wait and see. Uh, we're just going to wait for the other the Best Bros to return to participate more on Oak. So we'll see where they're going to go. So hopefully Best Bros continue all the way to their block or somehow they'll lose. But we'll see where they're going to go. So right now, let's move on with Tokyo Yoshi Pro Wrestling. Okay, so we got Tokyo Yoshi Pro Wrestling. This took place on the 17th of April in Corken Hall. The event is called Still Incomplete. First match is Irusu Endo and Moka Miyamoto taking on Sinashi Ori and Marika Kobashi. It was a pretty good event. Um, if you guys know this, this is prior before um, Sinashi Ori was getting closer and closer. If you guys know this, she already officially retired from wrestling due to the fact of her health condition. She had to be told to stop. But I have to say, these last the the next couple of uh, events that she's participate, I would like to see how she did. But in this one, I have to say she did pretty good. Um, I would have assumed that she um, would have teamed up with um, Hikari Noah because they're always close. But she ended up with uh, Marika Kobashi, which I wouldn't mind. But somehow, Cena was able to pull off a victory for her team. It was really good. Even though I did mention she did retire prior before, like after this event. Um, I wish we could see more of her. But she did a good job. I give her props. Next match we have is a six, uh, six um, women tag team match. We got Pom Harajuku teaming up with two thirds of Up Up Girls, Raku and Mio Watanabe taking on uh, Hiroi Ryu, Haruna Neko, and Yuna Na -ma uh, Manaze. Basically, in this match, I would have assumed that Pom and Up Up Girls would lose. But, however, it did not go exactly like I thought I was wrong. It was a pretty good event. But, however, I wouldn't expect Ruka, or Raku, to, um, to win, pick up the victory. Because she's like the child of the group. You know, if you guys remember, not too long ago, she was facing off against Rika. And she was hiding under the, the ring. And Rika was looking for her, unaware that she was hiding from her. But it was a good win, I have to say. Uh, I feel like she's developing more, but we'll see where they're going to go from there. Next match is a Tornado three-way tag team match. We have B-Stars consistent of Zuzumi, Mirai Maumi versus Hyper Masawa and Shoko Nakajima taking on the Magical Sugar Rabbits, Mizuki and Yuka Sakasaki. Now, you probably say, how is this Tornado works? Well, um... Here's the best part. Um, they kind of had to separate Hyper Masawa and Sh uh, Shoko Nakajima. So basically, Hyper ended up with uh, B Stars while Shoko ended up with the Magical Sugar Rabbits. But the match itself was pretty good. But however, um, from what I understand in this match, there was a more of an implication for the Princess Tag Team titles implication. One of these teams could most likely be the next challengers, whoever wins the semi-main event for the Tag Team titles. And I'll get to that in a bit. But however, to my surprise, I did not expect that B-Star were going to win this match. I would have assumed the Magical Sugar Rabbit since they seem like the fan favorite because I've been watching their shows a lot but however b stars i have to say it gave a perfect fresh eye to see okay we got to pay attention to them and it felt natural with it but we'll see how that they're gonna go 
Next match is for the International Princess title between now uh, Kaku, um, Kakuda and, of course, the champion Yuki Kamifuku. This match was happened because um, <coughs> uh, Kakuda pinned Kamifuku and she gets a title shot. However, this match was very intensified. I would not expect a whole lot because I would have assumed that Yuki would have remained as champion. And that's exactly what happened. Um, I don't know. I feel like she, um, Naoki Kakuda may have not been. She may have been a strong challenger. But I don't know if she was personally the right one to dethrone her. Which is normal. But we'll see how that goes. But somehow Yuki came over top on this one. Uh, pinning uh, Kakuda for the 1-2-3 and retaining her title. The next match, we have the Princess Tag Team titles between Neo Bishi, um, Bishi Kingun, consisting of Mace, St. Michelle, and Saki-sama, taking on Bakuretsu sisters, Yuki Unio, and Nadoka Temna. This is one of those, this match was already been in the making due to the fact that Neo Bishi Goon actually won the tournament. And they get a shot of the tag team title. And I have to say, seeing how May, uh, me, uh, me, St. Michelle has adapted, it felt like, okay, they deserve the tag team titles. I wouldn't expect a whole lot. But if you guys know, if you guys seen May, St. Michelle, you can guess, isn't that May Siruga? Yes, it is May Siruga. Um, don't know how they're booking her with Tokyo Yoshi Pro because... She's not currently signed with them. She's currently still with God to Move, a training under Emery Sakura. But that's a different uh, story for another time. But I was surprised in this match that it was May St. Michelle that pinned Yuki Aino. I'm like, whoa, that is crazy. And I'm sure uh, Emery Sakura would, is probably proud of it. And of course, they as soon as the match was over, there was a good promo. However, B Stars announced themselves as the next challengers. So, like I said, there was in fact implications of that. It did show that they are capable. They want to be the next ones to face off for the tag team title. Um, don't know if it did happen already, but if I do, I'll probably catch up to it as soon as possible. Like I said, I'm a little bit I'm a bit behind on many events, but like I said, I'll catch up. Now the main event, which is the Princess of Princess title between Maki Ito, the cutest in the world, taking on Rika Tatsumi, the current champion. It was a very interesting match because um, I would everybody probably would have loved to see Maki Ito become the champion. But however, somehow Rika was able to pull it off and pin her for the 1-2-3, retaining the top. But however... She wanted to show respect for Maki Ito, but Maki Ito is the kind of person who tells you F you. But however, Rika was not done. Instead of a challenger stepping up to face her, she made one person her challenger. And this person is from her past, from someone who right now Maki Ito is close friends with. And that person is Miyu Yamashita. Now you probably ask, why would she want her to challenge her? <coughs> Simple. From my understanding, Rika, in the other hand, was the new girl in the block lo losing to someone like Yamashita. And now that she's champion, she feels that she needs to right what it was wrong, her loss towards her. But Miyu had, did not want no part of her until R uh, Rika got in her face. So basically, we will have that match as soon as possible once I catch up with everything. So that's pretty much it, what's going on with Tokyo Yoshi Pro. I will follow up on more things. And keep in mind, we're expecting Yuka Sakasaki in AEW real soon. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to review is Ice Ribbon. This is Peace Party number 74 in Yokohama, or they call it the Yokohama Party, took, over, took place on the 4th of May. 
it first opened up with an exhibition match between uh, this new girl named Budo taking on Tekla. It was a five-minute match. Now, you probably say, how can it be a five-minute match exhibition? Well, that's how they play the rules down there. Don't ask me why. But it was really interesting. Now, I would have assumed right away that Tekla was going to win this match since she has more experience with the other with her opponent. But, however, it ended in a um, time limit draw. So, probably you could assume, if you're a fan, that maybe Ice Ribbon has hopes that she could be a big star one day. I'm assuming she's currently in the dojo, still training to become a wrestler. Who knows? But we'll see where they're going to go. Then after that, they throw in a little segment. As you know, this is supposed to be a Yoshi promotion. Super Delphin shows up, who is the leader of DWO, which I'm assuming is called Delphin World Order. Turns out that uh, Zuzu Suzuki, who is a member of this group, wants to bring in a new member. And her, the person he picked, that she picked is now Ishikawa. So basically, she has to prove her worth to be part of the group. Now, is this an official group with Ice Ribbon? The answer to that is no. However, she was scheduled to put, be in a match against Momo Ko, uh, Kogo. This match was very interesting. I would not expect a whole lot, but I was surprised... <coughs> That um, Kogo was re really bringing it, excuse me, bringing it in so far to prove that she is worthy to be in the ring. But however, the match ended in a time limit draw. This may not like uh, Ishikawa's way. Nobody likes time limit draws. It sucks. But we know they'll probably get another match between those two down the line somewhere. Now, we got... Um, the next match, Bani Oikawa taking on Taie Homna, who is a member of DWO and, of course, Joint Army. It's another a really interesting match. Now, I was, like, really impressed with Taie Homna, how she has developed. She has a bit of the grappling st style and, of course, a bit of the submission, and I enjoyed that. It was pretty good that she used that in the works. However, it did help her to win her match against Banny, and it was like, wow, pretty impressed. No wonder she was was recruited for both factions, but it was good. I enjoyed it. The next match is a six-woman tag team match. We got Honori Hana, Yuko Sakurai, and Totoro Suzuki taking on Joint Army, Rina Shinkagi, Cherry, and Matsuya Uno. So, practically... This was a very tough battle. However, the edge to me went directly with Hana, Sakurai, and Sa uh, Suzuki because majority of the of that team are bigger competitors. They're shape size. It kind of helped them out in any possible way. But however, it Joint Army actually lost big time in this matter. So you wouldn't expect a whole lot, but it did. So basically, the bigger, the ones with the bigger individuals had the upper hand, and that's exactly what happened. Next match we have is a tag team match. We got Ami Murua teaming with Abuki Hoshi, taking on Zuzu Suzuki and Aruka Amizuka from uh, Diana. <coughs> this was also a really good match, but however, I wasn't entirely hyped for it because you know. It was, there was no story buildup for me, but it was really good. It was good, but um, I didn't know what to expect. But however, it was all right. So Zuzu, Zuzu was the one who picked up the victory for her team. The next match is a tag team match. This is a title I had not even heard of. It's called the WUW World Underground Wrestling Women's Title between Madeline and Tekla. Now, I became a fan of Madeline because she's adaptable. What I did not know is she's training in MMA. I'm like, wow, that's pretty good. But however, I think the best part of this match, this was one of my favorite matches of this particular event, is when Tekla cut a piece of Madeline's hair. And Madeline actually lost her mind, began taking out her aggressions out on Tekla. But however, the aggression did not help her win the match and she lost. 
Now, I don't know what happened, like, post-match when this woman, I don't know who it was, comes out, calls her out and two other women. Something happened, something miraculous, probably that's happy for them. But, however, I don't know what it was, but I'm hopefully it was good news. The next match is another title match, which is the main event. This one is for the IW19 title between Izuki Aoki and um, Tsukushi Aruka. This match, I wasn't sure what to expect because I don't know if there was any story build up from my understanding. But it was a good match. Um, I would have assumed Aoki was going to win because she seems like the, the, the heel in this match. But however, it was... Tsukushi who actually won this match with the pinfall allowing her to retain the title So this match this event was pretty good But like I said the my favorite one is the one with Madeline and Tekla. That's I have to say that's my ultimate favorite match From this particular event and I hope I get to see more events like this down the line Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode um the next episode is going to be basically a change up. I decided, you know, to put two reviews from two different events. One is going to be the Got to Move Pro Wrestling Choco Pro 132 with the special of Michinuku Pro Wrestling. But however, I will throw in a freelance show that was created from um, whoever this is the event called Gaiaism Decade of Quarter Century. This one took place back in June on the 13th. I can't wait to do that. However, hope you guys get to catch me on the podcast. I'll be talking more about Zelina Vega, Sanjay Dutt now working with AEW, and many other things. And of course, um, what's been going on with Lana, who apparently spilled the beans ever since she got released. So if you guys want to hear that, that's going to be in my podcast called DWZ Podcast with J-Rod. You guys can catch me anywhere, like from Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Overcast, Radio Public, uh, Breaker, and uh, Spotify. So, any of them you can catch me on. But for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah! And have a nice day. Bang!